All right, they say you're supposed to drain your air compressor every day. <laughs> every day. Who says that? They it's say. Air compressor people. Well, this one did get you. Oh, 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 yeah. Welcome back for episode 24 of Building a House Start to Finish, sponsored by eRigging.com. Today we will be building this awesome handrail in the stairwell at the Modern Mountain Getaway and then stringing it up with this super low profile 3 16 cable rails and turnbuckles from eRigging. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Let's get going. Okay. Frame rate. All right, you got me? Yep. Okay, here's our handy base plate, four inches square. So I made this jig here. That basically will space my post one inch in and one inch in. This is a two by two post. And in theory, that would make it perfectly square and perfectly centered. Now it would be really difficult to do this without a jig. I'll bet you guessed it already, but Jamie also had a jig to help him drill these holes perfectly in each corner as well. Back out on the job, we placed each post roughly in its position. Now there is an odd spacing because there's 12 steps and four posts, which means one space has to be different. And there were several factors we had to take into account when placing these posts, especially building codes. And let's talk about that. The top of the rail has to be at least 36 inches off the line connecting the nosing of the treads. There is a maximum allowance of four inches between any horizontal or vertical balusters, but there is an exception along the irregular shape of the stairs, allowing for up to six inches there. The handrail is something different. It has to be between 34 and 38 inches off the line connecting the nosings. It has to be continuous throughout and have the proper grip size. After a bunch of math, we used some tape so that we could mark out the exact location of our post bases without marking up our actual stair tread. Then we drilled the holes and this is hickory. This is super hard and we smoked a few bits while doing it. Then we used some temporary screws to put the post base down and we did label the posts so that we could orient them the same if we ever took them off in the same position. Next, we set up our laser level in lock mode to cast a line across these posts at the exact angle of the stair nosings so that we could cut them off all perfectly straight. You could use a string line to do this as well. Three, six and a half. Oh, well, seven, two, six, four. Oh, that's close. Look at that, it's perfect. Next, we took each post outside and cut them off with a cutoff disc on a grinder at 36.4 degrees exactly. With the post reinstalled all in the same locations, we could then measure for the top cap. And if you look closely, we're actually mitering where the top cap hits the bottom railing. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as we got set up to weld, the plumber showed up with a giant water heater and needed to go through the same space that we had just junked up. And he wasn't impressed. With the top cap placed in position, we could tack it with our MIG welder and let the plumbers go by. Here's a look at some of the creative shielding that we had to do to keep sparks from marring up our nice white painted walls. You don't want to do that. After it was all tack welded, Jamie went back around and put a continuous bead on each weld followed up with a lot of grinding to make these all smooth and finished looking. Up next, it was time to start fabbing up this round hand railing that goes on the inside of our rail because the top cap of our rail does not pass code as a grip. The bottom of this hand rail will curve around and return into the bottom post, and we're using these pre-made radius sections in combination in order to achieve the curve we're looking for. What we're doing here is trying to mock this thing up and get a length here for my straight run. Which wow, bang on 24. We'll call it 24. That's a slim fit there, buddy. Show off my muscles. <laughs> with our last handrail piece in position, we realized that we could not reach it with our welder to tack it off, so we had to pick the welder up. Well, I say we, they had to pick the welder up and carry it up the stairs while I videoed it so you could see it. And here's a look at the railing after it's fully welded. It kind of looks like an exhaust pipe. So, it's Arlo. 
So we've used our grinder with a hard grinding disc to take off the majority of the weld. We're trying to blend these surfaces out and you know, we're not going for absolute perfection here, but I like to use a file sometimes because you can kind of skew it across the, um, the curve parts here. And in essence, the file won't get down into a low spot. It can only remove a high spot. So that helps to identify and remove high spots. After grinding and filing for about an hour, the final step was to use an orbital sander actually to smooth it all up. You're good at this. Hey, you know, you do it all your life. That's what you get. That's right. All right, now what we're about to do, I call it schmutzing. How do you spell that? I don't know if you can say that, dude. <laughs> you're going to offend somebody for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're going to. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to schmutz it. This is some black spray paint. Now, here's the deal. This thing, the pole has mill scale on it. It's a darker color. And we kind of scuffed it up. But all the places that I welded, we ground and sanded. It's all bright, shiny. So in an effort to keep the parts that we made shiny looking more like nothing happened here, I'm going to just squirt some spray paint on it lightly. Not going to heavy coat it, just lightly. I'm going to let that dry. And then we can just barely scuff that with some sandpaper. And it will kind of just give it the same look as the pole. Okay. All right. They say you're supposed to shake paint cans like this for two minutes. Two minutes. Here, I got it. <laughs> I'll come back in an hour. Yeah, I got this job. Uh, hey, man, can you get that? I got, can yep, you get that lid off there? I got for it. Me? What, you, oh, what wow. in the world is that? Oh. <laughs> what is that for cracking open oysters? And this is a boat knife, and this is made for getting knots out. Like, no way. Yeah, on on yachts and boats, when the lines get super tight, yeah. you know, they're not. You can just take this and jam it in there. And I have not heard out. of that. You're uh, taking it to a whole new level, having a boat knife. What about a construction <laughs> knife? How about that? Oh, <laughs> that would probably be better. Uh, it's a bottle opener, I think. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think that's a bottle opener. <laughs> it works as a bottle opener. <laughs> and then, uh, still I'm sure you've tested that. <laughs> Dude, a couple times. <laughs> Now the key, Ooh, I don't want to spray paint my camera. I don't want to spray the camera here. But All right, let me get over here. Now the key to schmutzing is to hold the hold the thing back a little farther. You don't want to be like in your normal paint zone, okay, of six to eight inches. You want to be a little farther back. You need All that right. mist. Yeah. I'm gonna get further back. All right, I'm just gonna kind of, kind of, you know, you gotta get a little artistic with it, okay? I'm starting to get that medium coverage I'm looking for. I certainly don't want it to be all painted. That would be the worst. So. uh I think, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should have hired Ray to do this part. I think, see, that's looking about right now. That looks generally like this. All right, that's good. I'm gonna leave it alone. Well, hey, this is for our channel, Bob. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey, we got first dip. We got first dip. We got first dip. It's gonna touch the paint. I need somebody to get, uh, go ahead and get a drill and get a drill and get a drill with an extension. All right, so we got this handy dandy phalange on the end. Eric is gonna find out whether or not we actually put blocking in the wall. What do you think, bud? I don't wanna know, unless it's yes, then I wanna know. Okay. I would say that's a yes. That sounded good. Hey. That'll hold. Here's something that's kinda cool. I need some little L brackets to mount the handrail and I need them to be bent 90 degrees. I know you can buy these things, but I don't have any place to buy them uh, locally. So I'm going to take this torch right here. It's a little map gas torch and I'm going to heat up a piece of metal and just bend it. And with the steel frame complete, it's time to break out the stainless steel cables and turnbuckles and string it up. <laughs> oh, no, what is that? <laughs> Seriously, it's fine. I think it's for hole placement. Wow, fancy. What's it gonna be? I know what it is. Do you? More bubble wrap. Oh, more bubble wrap. <laughs> Wow. A man child, we got the bowl wrap. There it is. 
And it's a swager. This is used to crimp the cable into the end of the turnbuckle and terminations. To get going with our cable install, we first marked layout on all of the posts. The two end posts are drilled horizontally while the two intermediate posts are drilled at the angle of the stairs for the cable to pass through. For the cable terminations, we drilled 3 8 inch holes and we actually found it easiest to do this with a step up bit. You can see where we marked where we needed to stop drilling. The holes in the intermediate posts need to actually be drilled on an angle so that the cable will pass straight through on the angle. That's hard to do. You can't start a drill bit into metal at an angle very easily. So we drilled a hole straight through and then took a bit and sort of ovaled the hole out by tilting it up as I ran the drill. This worked pretty well. Just FYI, the spacing we used on these cables was about three inches, and that gives a little bit of room if these cables have any deflection to still meet the four inch minimum required by code. Once all of the holes were drilled, it was time to start wow. cutting the cable with our cable cutters, and Ray and Jason both claimed to be experts at this. You are so full of crap, Dude, last time I you Anyways, uh, once the cable is cut, you can thread it through the holes and then swage the ends on. One end is just a termination, the other end is a turnbuckle, which is a fancy word for a tensioner. And what's cool about these cables is that the tensioner part is actually hidden inside of the post so that you don't see it and you get a super clean look. Nice. That's one of the prettiest cable looks I've seen. If you're thinking about doing this for yourself, my advice would be to order a couple extra of each part just in case you mismeasure like we did one time and have to throw one section away and buy lots of drill bits. And the final step in this whole process of building this railing is to clean and then put a clear top coat on all of the steel parts. Even though this is inside, it could still actually rust if you don't put a clear coat on here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure to check back next week where we're going to wrap this project up with a bunch of odds and ends that have to happen on every single job that you would never think about until you realize it's just not done. We will follow that up with a tour of the finished house and this thing will be done start to finish. See ya. What side your good beard side? Uh, I didn't have time to wash it this morning. Yeah. Here we'll, again. well, this is behind the scenes. You're here <laughs> at the Ray J Builder Buddies photo shoot for the logo. Turn this way, back to back. Oh, that's looking tough. Yeah. Is that the shot?